At the brink of the busiest travel time of the year, the TSA quietly announced that agents' security discretion, they, they no longer had to guarantee a pat-down option for passengers who do not want to go through the full-body scanner. Just as quick, the agency has been slapped with at least two lawsuits, one challenging the mandatory scan policy, the other filing an emergency injunction on the policy to keep the pat-down in place. Joining me now is investigative journalist and civil liberties activist Danny Panzella. Danny, thank you so much for being here. You know, the TSA has already filed an opposition to the lawsuit asking for an emergency injunction, saying the petitioner did not meet certain requirements like proving any kind of irreparable injury. But in fact, wouldn't it have been wise for someone to sue after they've been denied a pat down? Or is there actually enough to stand on simply having a new policy that does not mandate the right to a pat down? Well, I'm not a civil rights attorney, uh, but I do believe that there needs to be injury. Uh, and if they can argue, I guess, that privacy is being injured, uh, then I suppose. From what I understand, I believe the lawsuit is because they, the TSA violated their, their regulations that they're supposed to put new policies out for public comment. Uh, and that was filed by um, John Corbett, I believe, out of Florida. Mm -hmm, right. And, uh, sorry, John Corbett, uh, probably the TSA's biggest tormentor. He files a lot of lawsuits <laughs> against them. Um, he claims that he was filing because people are skipping. Uh, people have various reasons for skipping the scanner. Let's talk about that. The policy change, why people may opt for a pat down instead. It seems the TSA changed their policy because they said that the imaging now is a cartoon as opposed to the nude body image that people find so invasive. But in doing that, they're assuming that everyone opts out simply because of that image. What are some of the reasons that people would opt out of the scanner? Well, I opt out every time I fly. I hop, opt out for both privacy reasons and for health reasons. Uh, there is a lot that needs to be studied about the radiation being used in these scanners. Uh, MIT has put out reports that are very disturbing, saying that the radiation can actually unzip your DNA. Uh, there's a lot of other evidence that this, this radiation needs to be studied. And for now, the TSA to say it's going to be mandatory that everyone uh, at our discretion is going to be scanned, uh, there certainly could be in the future some pretty heavy lawsuits for injury once, once that study, those studies are done. And, and I'll be clear, they haven't said that it's going to be mandatory for everyone to walk through. They just said that they no longer have to guarantee the right to a pat down if they feel like there's some sort of security consideration. Um, you were talking about the public policy, or go ahead, did you have something to say? Well, what I wanted to say was, who makes that decision? Is it up to the agent? And what, what is the criteria? The TSA is always very ambiguous about this. So we don't really know what the criteria is. Is the TSA agent, and listen, I, I opt out every time I fly. And every time I'm being frisked, I talk to the agent. And it's clear to me that they don't enjoy frisking strangers. So if a TSA agent decides, you know what, I don't like the way that guy looks. I don't think I want to. I don't want to frisk him. I'm just going to force him through the machines. Is that going to be a criteria? Is there some kind of chain of command that is involved in the decision? You know, we have none, we don't know any of this stuff. And these are things that the public needs to be made aware of so that it can comment with, with all the information. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully the TSA would be held accountable. But when they made the TSA, the naked body scanners mandatory to begin with, or their primary screening method, uh, they did not put it out for public comment. They were sued and forced to put it out for public comment. But then once the public made their commentary, the TSA never responded. They were never held accountable to any of the concerns. So this, this may all just be a, a, you know, a legal exercise in the end. Right, and Jonathan Corbett uh, made that um, in his lawsuit as well. He said that, you know, despite the thousands of angry comments that came out in that public comment section, it was just basically a way for people to air their grievances, and then they did whatever they wanted to anyway. This policy change was done without the public's knowledge. It was done very quietly, slipped in. And you're right, there's nothing in the policy that details what those security considerations are. So that's kind of a bit of a question mark. Real quick, we only have about 30 seconds left, but do you think that, changing this policy, as some people are saying, is illegal? And do you think that anything will be done? Do you think these lawsuits will have any result? 
Well, I mean, I would, I would certainly argue that it's unconstitutional when you have different standards being applied to different people, and especially when the, uh, the criteria is arbitrary, uh, that certainly, those are definitely bring up civil rights concerns. Um, you know, right now, the Syrian refugee crisis is a hot issue, and, you know, maybe TSA agents will disproportionately, you know, choose Arab, uh, Arabs or, or darker-skinned people who appear Arab to go through these machines and force them and deny them their right to opt out. Journalist and civil liberties activist Danny Penzella, thank you so much.